If you're finding it hard to get great mixes, it might not have anything to do with your technical ability. Because the thing is, if you spend a lot of time trying to find different elements in your track, load effects, and make your way around your DAW at snail's pace, well, then your ears are gonna get tired first, quickly followed by your brain, and then everything is gonna sound like shit. So today I'm gonna be showing you how I make my workflow as efficient as possible and not have to dedicate brain power to the other the things that keep getting in the way. Over the years, I've refined the process so I can spend more time actually doing what I want, which is mixing the track, not letting other things get in the way. Because let's be honest, when you've listened to something a thousand times over, you can really start to hate it by the end. So I wanna minimize anything that gets in the way of the most important part of the process. Now this does take a little bit of preparation, which admittedly is not the most exciting thing. Think of it like a warm up before you enter a workout. That workout is always gonna feel way better when your muscles know what's gonna happen and you can get into hitting your personal bests almost immediately. I wanna start by saying thank you to one of my clients called Demi for letting me use his track for this. He submitted the stems via Boombox, which is what I use to work with all my clients, whether it be for production, mixing and mastering. Now in the project, I have access to all the stems as WAVs and Demi has added me as a collaborator here. So I am an editor, which allows me to download the files and comment on them. I can also message Demi from here or set up any tasks. And once I'm ready with the first version of the Mix and Master, I can upload the files in here and Demi will receive a notification immediately. So the entire collaboration process is contained within one platform, which immediately makes things a lot more efficient. And this includes things like mix notes because I can leave timestamp comment like this, turn up the bass, and Demi can do the same on any mixes or masters I submit to him for feedback or revision. So just download the stems by selecting them all, Hit this button here, it's gonna prepare the files. Now once they're ready, they look like this, but the only annoying thing about these stems is that they have Demi made to love Beirut at night at the front of the file name, which is gonna show up when I load them into Logic. And what I actually want is just the name of what that stem is or does. Now I do have this software called Rename It, which allows me to rename multiple files at once. I can just drag these in like this, to get rid of the text at the front, it's 36 characters. We can see here the before and the after, and then I'm gonna hit rename selected. And then here they are renamed and ready to be pulled into Logic. Now in Logic, I have three templates, one for production, one for mastering, and the one we're gonna be using today is for mixing. Now I do have three analyzers that opens up with this, which are actually on my second monitor, which is up here. I don't use these throughout the entire mix, but it's great to have a visual reference every so often. I've got the Azillus Megascope, which I use to check phase, the Schwa Schwope, which I use to check peaks in the waveform, and Voxengo Span, which is a free frequency analyzer and a very good one too. Before I drag the stems into Logic, it's actually really important that you have something set up if you want the colors to be automatically assigned. So head to Logic Pro, Settings, and then come down to View. Head over to Tracks, and then you wanna make sure that Track Color and Marker Color are auto-assign 96 colors. When I drag in my files, you'll see that they're all automatically assigned their own colors which makes it easier to locate different sounds and elements, especially when you have a lot of stems. Now I'm gonna highlight the project name, which includes the BPM and the key, and that's what we're gonna call the project. And I always save it as a folder and make sure all the boxes are ticked except for movie file, unless you have movie files in there, of course, which I don't. In case I need to tell someone like my assistant or anyone remixing the track what the BPM is, and the key helps me with any auto-tuning that I may need to apply later. So next I'm gonna add some arrangement markers by opening this window here. The problem is, a lot of other stuff opens up too. So I can actually just right click and remove these views, essentially hide them. So let's add an arrangement marker for the intro, which I believe is only four bars long because then the vocal starts. Cool, so that's the verse there. And this goes on for a while. It's just me and you. Hop in the car, we'll ride 
I think I'm gonna call this next section the pre-chorus. By setting up the arrangement markers, it helps me jump between sections, so I'm not wasting time trying to figure out where verse two or chorus three is. And when it comes to organizing the track, I like to have all of my drums together, so I'm just gonna select those. I'm holding command here, just scrolling through and finding anything that sounds like it's gonna be part of drums or percussion and I can drag this all up together. So just by selecting them all with command, then clicking without holding anything else, it will drag them and group them all together. And then I can do command shift and D, create a summing stack, and this will create my first grouped stack, which is linked to a bus. So you'll see it's bus one here. I can now collapse that and then move on to grouping the next set of sounds. When the waveforms are really small and hard to see, which is because they were exported from whatever DAW at a really low volume, I can actually just select them all, focus on the loudest audio file and then increase the gain over here on the left hand side, but I don't want to increase it so much that I end up clipping the audio file. So I'll push it about 7 dB. There's actually a little bit of clipping there. Let's just pull back to six. And now all of my waveforms are considerably louder. Now this may still not be enough. So you can do a waveform zoom on the top right hand corner. If you click and hold here, you can actually decide how much you want the waveform to be zoomed in. I'm just gonna bring it all the way for now because it's just gonna help me see things as I'm arranging or listening back to those stems. Now, once I finish grouping or track stacking, it looks a little bit like this. I like to put the kick and bass together because I like to process them together. Then all the drums are together. That includes fills, but sometimes I might take those out and actually put them in the effects track stack where I have impacts, risers, crashes, things like that. I have all the vocals together. Now I might extract the lead vocal here or group some of the backing vocals together within the track stack, which is really easy. So I can just select these harmonies like so, Command Shift D, and I can actually create a summing stack within a summing stack here. So we can call these chorus harmonies. And then I have all the instruments together. A quick shortcut to open and close all the track stacks at once, by the way, is if you hold Option and click on opening any of them and you'll see that they open all together and then if I want those to zoom to fit my window I can just do command A and then hit Z like so. So this will select everything and then zoom it all to fit in your screen. Now I have two plugins that I'm almost certain I'm going to use on every channel and if I don't I can just bypass it or delete it later. I'm going to select every single channel here by selecting the first one. I don't need anything on the demo. Holding shift scrolling over to the last one like so and then i'm going to come over here to favorites and i'm going to load the fab filter pro q3 as you can see here this is now ready to go on every single channel and the other one i want to add is the ssl native channel strip 2. the reason i have both is because i really like the fab filter pro q3 for the dynamic eq and being more surgical and i love the ssl channel strip for broader strokes the sounds in the mix that don't need anything surgical and it has a great compressor too for that initial dynamic control. There are lots of great channel strips out there. This is just the one that I like to use. And it's because it's a Swiss army knife. It has a little bit of everything in it. Now I know a lot of pro mixing engineers have all their buses set up, all their sends with their effects. That just isn't my style. And the reason being is because I actually find that that level of preparation prevents me from being creative because I always end up using the same effects, the same reverbs and delays. So what I do instead is when I need to load up an effect, I will just send to the next available bus. And then on that bus from the settings, I have a bunch of user channel strip settings. These are my favorite ones that I have ready to go. So let's say on this kick, I want the kick room reverb, which is the Pro R by Fab Filter with a really, really short decay. I find that this stops things getting cluttered and uses a lot less CPU because if I have over 20 sends loaded up each with individual plugins, that's gonna eat up into a lot of my power and potentially slow down my computer, which will slow down my mixing process. Anyway, let me take you through some of the bus effects chains that I have set up. This is an example of my drum bus chain, which also includes a clipper and a limiter. This chain is all the different SSL fusion plugins, which emulates the hardware unit, which I used to have. Then I have more creative ones, such as delays with spring reverbs or reverbs with pitch drifting, side chain.
with a black 1176. I have two methods for mixing. One I call the mute method and the other one I call the solo method. Now the mute method, what I do is actually mute all the components of the track like so. And then I start by mixing one element of the track with broad strokes, for example, the kick. Then I unmute the bass and then I do the drums. I'll start with the claps and the hats and so on. So I start focused on one element of the track and then I mix around that. If there are vocals in the track, that's always the vocals. If there aren't, then I always start with the kick, drums and bass. The other method, which I find is more common and nothing special is what I call the solo method. You listen to everything together, you make those adjustments when everything is playing and then when you need to hone in or focus on something, you just solo it. Now you may at some point find yourself with multiple channels soloed in Logic when really you just want one solo but you don't wanna to have to click and drag through all of them. Now if you hold Option and then click solo like that, it will cancel out the other solos or unsolo them and then only solo the channel that you have selected. Another hot tip is in Logic, even if you have the cycle selected and as you'll know, as soon as I hit the space bar, it's gonna cycle around that section, but you wanna keep the cycle there and focus on another section. Make sure you have your marquee tool loaded up as your command click tool, then hold command and click and drag over the section that you want to listen to, hit the space bar and watch how the playhead jumps to that area and unlinks itself from the cycle. Now, as I said before, once I've done the first mix, I can click and drag it into Dropbox. Demi will be notified immediately, but I can go ahead, make some comments like, really love the vocals here. Do you like the delay I added? And because the conversation is in one place rather than email, iMessage, WhatsApp, notes, I can quickly make any changes that Demi needs me to so that I can deliver the final result without getting lost in translation. If you take these steps to being organized before you sit down for a mix your mixes are going to be way better you're going to enjoy the process more i certainly do this is something that i had to learn the hard way and slowly refine the process over the years but i'm so glad to be sharing it with you now don't forget that boombox is entirely free you can sign up in the link below and you can start exchanging stems mixes mix notes and collaborate straight away so what are you waiting for go check that out it's been a pleasure as always and i'll see you soon peace